It's on. Just start talking. Yeah, let's cut it out. Hello from Shalom Makers. Today we're going to talk about a simple but very effective chicken watering system. Did a lot of research on Craig's or uh, on YouTube last night, looking for different watering ideas to see if we could find something potentially better than what we have. And I'll be honest, I think we're going to find out today that this is probably one of the better systems out there. What we start with is my son and I, Luke, we actually put gutters on our chicken coop. You can probably see the gutters up here. So we put gutters into a rain collection system. So this rain collection system uh, is what we use how we water all of our chickens. And we're going to go through actually setting up the other part. The reason why we're setting it up is um, the one flaw that we had in it, we actually allowed our pipe, we allowed our pipe to freeze. So our three quarter inch pipe that we have that feeds our bucket, <clears throat> it actually froze. And uh, when we went to go crack the water the other day in a tote, it actually broke our little, uh, it broke the front of the plastic, plastic bucket. So we're going to go ahead and set that up today and uh, we're going to take you through the steps and we'll, uh, we'll show you how to do that. Be right back. Okay. Okay. We're going to go ahead and start. We want to install this half inch float valve. This half inch float valve is the key to having our automatic watering system. I've seen these on uh, YouTube for use for several other things for chicken waters for float devices. Typically using those small uh, uh, nipple type. Those nipple type we found um, they actually decrease our egg production. They just the chickens can't get enough water out readily and uh, by them not being able to get enough water it's a really important part especially when it's hot out there. We want to have a, a full access of water available for them and those nipple type uh, just do not give it to us. So what we're going to build here is I'm going to go ahead and drill a 7 8 inch hole um, on the back side of the bucket. I'm going to drill this hole Drill this hole and then we're going to go ahead and set ourselves up. It has, it comes, this, this valve, you can buy them on eBay. All it is is if you type in float valve, half inch uh, pipe thread, I believe you'll, they'll come right up on eBay. I think they're like five bucks a piece, so they're pretty cheap. So we're going to take this, it's going to have a nice tight fit here. So we'll take that, thread it in because it's such a tight fit. Now if you want, you can look down in the bucket here. The key to this valve is, it's not all the way threaded in yet, but you're going to see. The key to this valve, you, well, you want to set it up like this. So, and you can adjust right here with your uh, wing nut as far as the actual height of the water that you want in there. So the way ours is going to set up, can zoom out for a second. So after we mount this, we're going to cut out the front of this. I'll draw that with a marker real quick. So we're going to go ahead and cut out the front of the box. And then this will allow the chickens to go in there, drink their water. We'll put a top on here so no, no chicken water can get in there. And then what we do is when we put this down, we stick a board down. And once you put that board down, the chickens can't scratch in it. They can't do anything. It just simply gives you um, what we found to be the best clean water. And uh, just working great. So we'll be back in a minute as we cut this stuff out. Okay, so we're back. What we've done right now is we went ahead and cut out the front of the bucket. And this is a simple bucket uh, that you can either pick up like at a Golden Corral um, or a Walmart or something like that. Just a, any kind of a square rectangular bucket. And you can see, got the valve mounted down inside there. It's good and tight. And again, it's going to, the way this works is, you're going to look in from there. As the water level fills up, this raises up and there's a small needle valve in there. And as soon as it gets there, it actually shuts off. I believe these are rated for up to 40 pounds, so you should be able to hook them up to a garden hose if you'd like. Um, I wouldn't encourage that, but uh, some people do. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is, we know that the pipe, that the feed pipe for us is going to be three quarter inch. So what we've set up is, we've got a stub piece here, and I purposely put a T fitting here along with the cap, so that way in case if I ever need to extend water out, 
or uh, do anything else different. Long term, I'd like to set this up where there's a small hose on the end, and uh, about once a month, we go ahead and clean these out because uh, there is a little algae growth and stuff like that that happens. So I'd like to have a little, put a valve on here, and then just clean out the bucket. Right now, what we do is we just take a five gallon bucket, take the top off, and just dunk it in there after we scrub it. So I'm going to go ahead and screw this on, and then uh, we'll be back in, in a couple minutes. Okay, now we've went ahead and installed our pipe. This is going to actually be our tube that we talked about that's going to the water's going to end up coming in this way and what we're in the process of doing is we have one of these buckets but that's not enough based on the number of chickens we have so we're actually going to go ahead and I've drilled a hole on the lower portion of this bucket and we're going to go ahead and use a small uh, male adapter half inch PVC we're going to stick it through here and then I'm going to set it up to go ahead and fill up another bucket and then we'll cut another hole We'll cut another hole in this one, and then that will allow us to have two waterers using one float device. Uh, we, we currently have about 70 chickens, and those 70 chickens uh, will not handle with just one water. So two we're feeling comfortable with, uh, but uh, for, your, for your coop, you'll have to decide how many you need. Uh, but this is what we're doing, and it's allowing us to go ahead and use one float system, but yet get two chicken waterers. Uh, we'll be back in a minute when we get that assembled. Okay, so now you can see what we've done. We took that half inch male adapter. I just had an extra uh, bushing in the house that would happen to be half inch uh, pipe thread. I think it's actually set up for inch and a quarter uh, PVC. It actually ends up being a real good, real, really good fit. And if you come out here to this side here, what we did is on both sides, we stuck an O-ring in there. So that O-ring now is compressed tightly against there. That's the black piece right down inside here. So we just put that O-ring in there and it's sealed against there now and then we got the same thing on the inside. There's an O-ring. And all we did was just simply took a pair of channel locks and a pair of uh, crescent wrench to go ahead and just tighten it down. And we're going to do the same for the next one and then we'll get ready to install. Okay, so, so we're back again. What we've done, so we started off here, we had a half inch pipe. I ended up not having an additional half inch uh, male connector. So what I ended up having to do was I actually had to use a half by three quarter bushing. Went ahead and bushed it up to a three quarter inch male adapter. And then again, you can see there's an O-ring back there. So that way we've got a uh, seal on both inside and outside. And if you come to the inside, we went ahead and had a female three quarter inch uh, pipe thread adapter and we went ahead and threaded that in again with another o-ring and what that's going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to have two waters off of one float system and here's the top that we'll end up putting on these so this top you can see it snaps in place really tight so the chickens can jump on it they can do whatever they want but they're not going to actually get into it the only thing they're going to be able to do is get their head in here and drink we'll be back as we go hook it up Okay, right now we went ahead and uh, we put our double bucket system together. This bucket lid here is not fitting real well, so I just went ahead and stuck a brick on it. No big deal. I just don't want the chickens to get in it or uh, anything like that. Um, but we are set up. And now, on this particular side over here is where we are going to actually go ahead and hook up our supply line. But before we do that, I'm going to take you to the other end where our rain toad is and I want to show you what we're going to do differently so that way this will not freeze anymore and cause us any issues. So we'll go step over there now. Okay, we're, we're back for one final uh, footage. We're going to turn this thing on and see how it all looks. So we've got this valve open right now, the, uh, the drain valve. We're going to go ahead and open up the tote water and we should get some water that shoots out the bottom down here is what we're looking for. There we go, we got a little bit of dirt coming out. Now we're going to seal this off. And now, water should start flowing into the both chicken, uh, chicken waters, or at least the first one, then it'll cascade over to the second one. We'll go look at that right now and see how that's looking. And you can tell the chickens, uh, as we get up there, the chickens are already starting to, uh, to flock around. They're used to, they're used to actually having their water there. Let's see here. Let me check out. Let's see, 
see, we've got it. Uh, we had a small little problem. There was a little plug in the line. We actually had a few pine needles. So the pine needles actually are out now. Everything's flowing right in, and it is actually filling up real nice. Probably need another half inch to go, and then hopefully it will cascade over into our other tank. But other than that, that's how it works. We're going to go ahead and show you now the important part of what we put in in the backside. So we're going to shut off the water, and then we're going to go ahead and drain it. So we'll take a video of that, and we'll be right back. Okay, so this will hopefully be the last shot of the night. Uh, what we've got here is we're going to go ahead and shut off this valve which is what we need to do to isolate our rainwater collection tank off of the, uh, off the gutter system. And then we're going to go ahead and open this up because this is what we want. We want to drain this water out at night when we know it's going to get below freezing or for us it'll have to be you know 28 degrees or, or lower. Um, and if it gets below 28 degrees, we'll go ahead and do this simple system. We'll drain this pipe and after we drain that pipe, you know, it drains this whole section, it drains everything up to the water. Uh, we've proven that the water itself can handle being frozen, but the pipes themselves are a weak link. So that's why in this particular case, we redesigned it with this particular drain system. And uh, just want to say, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Shalom.